Hello, everybody. My name is Lily. Thank you so much for joining me today. I am so happy that you are here. In today's video, we are going to make or embellish some pockets from window envelopes. I'm not calling these junk mail envelopes because I have a whole box of window envelopes that I need to put to good use. So these are so cute. I have made these in the past, but I am going to embellish them slightly different than how I've done them um, in the past. I do have a video that I recorded about two years ago. It was 2020, and here are a sample of those that I made in that video. I will link that video down below. In fact, that is my most popular video, you guys. I am so excited and thank you so much. I think I have over 11,000 views on that video. I'm telling you, it's my number one, my number one video. And so I made these pockets out of using actual junk mail envelopes. And then I collaged using scraps. All of those details on how I made these super cute pocket envelopes is linked down below and one of the features of these envelopes that I am most proud of is that little gap between the fold and the actual pocket which allows you to insert a tag or whatever it is you're going to be placing in that pocket it makes it easy for you to reach in and slide it out and so that's when one of the features that I am most proud of the envelope was actually um the overall design of the envelope was inspired by um someone else but all of those details in that other video so go check it out it is a great video um it's a couple years old so it might be a little whack but it, show, <laughs> it shows you everything that you need to know on how to collage and make these great envelopes and i'm kind of going to go through that that same process in this video anyhow. Um, so this is like a new and improved version of it. And this is what I did. Now, in that old video, I used nothing but scraps um, to collage. And this time I'm going to use items from my stash. And the envelopes that I'm going to use are envelopes that I purchased at the thrift store. So I have a giant box of these window envelopes. So I'm going to put those to good use today. And one of the main purposes of this project is to use items that I have. Things in my stash that I haven't used um, as often as I would like. And so it is a use it or lose it. And I'm not about to lose any of my treasures. So we're going to put everything to use. I'm also going to use some of these jelly print papers. These here aren't my favorite. Um, I was playing with paints when I was doing it. And so some of the co color combinations aren't all that great. But they are in uh, my favorite hues. So we're going to use those. We're also going to use transfers and these are transfers that I purchased rub on transfers from the Dollar Tree so I bought them over a year ago and I haven't used them so we're going to use those and then also I went through my sticker stash so we're going to use some stickers and you could see that I've already made some off-camera because I was playing around um, just trying to come up with new ideas and ways to embellish the envelope. These stickers are so cute, these black and whites. I've had these for several years, completely forgot that it was a booklet of stickers. So um, those will be fun. I actually don't use them in this video, but I'm pointing them out because I did use one of those stickers on one of the pocket envelopes. So I just kind of gathered all of my supplies so that I can have them handy and we can get down to business. <laughs> so 
Here we have some of my favorite scrapbooking papers. And these are papers that I have been hoarding for a little while because I love them so much. They're bright, they're beautiful. And I didn't, I didn't realize how much I like cactus print paper, but as I was going through my, through my supplies, I have so much of it, so I must really like it. So let's use it. Again, I'm just pointing out that little gap there, um, which makes it so much easier, you know, to insert and pull something out. The inside of the of the envelope is lined. Now I'm going to show you. I'm going to walk you through that process and show you exactly how I embellished it. Oh, and the other thing that I will be using is washi tape. You have no idea how much washi tape I have thrown away because it all gummed up together, and it was so disappointing. And I'm not going to let that happen again. I'm also not buying any more washi tape until I use what I have. And so on, on this pocket, I did use three or four different types of washi tapes. They weren't sticky anymore, and so I had to use my glue stick to make sure it um, adhered. But super cute. And then, now I didn't add a brad as a closure for these. That is completely optional. You can use a brad, a button, whatever you like. But for these, I just wanted to use a little clip um, and paper clips. That's it. Keeping it kind of simple, but also trying to use, um, trying to come up with other ideas. You know, just in I. In fact, I don't. I don't know where the brads are, and so that was one of the reasons why I didn't use the brads because. I don't know where I placed them and I had these I had these cute little envelopes on my desk so so you can see here I'm pointing out that I'm using different washi tapes and some of the stickers to embellish the envelopes and just adding one of those cute paper clips to it this one here I use that right there even though it looks like scraps it is actually scrapbooking paper and then I lined it with some vintage book page. I'm not going to do that again because it was really fragile. It's great for collaging bits and pieces of it, but using larger or larger piece like I did here, um, it was kind of fragile and so I had to be really careful with it. And I may go back and do a layer of matte medium over the top just so it doesn't feel so brittle. But super cute. I love how each one of these turned out. These paper clips with the rose on them were made several years ago, like, I don't know, six years ago. And they were made with the tattered rose, no, the pine cone. I think it's a pine cone die from Tim Holtz. Super cute. And this pocket on the reverse, I did, on all of them, I did line them with scraps of paper. I love this one, you guys. This one turned out so cute. That tile, it looks like Moroccan tile scrapbooking paper. Oh my gosh, I absolutely love it. And it's one of my favorites. Oh, and that, there's that black and white sticker that I used in that lower left-hand corner. It added such a nice touch. I love it. Now, I, I am making even more off camera but for the sake of the video and time i'm only going to i think i only make a couple of them here's one that is just it's just screaming look at me everybody i'm right here it is loud it is proud and it is so vibrant and colorful so what i did is i just kind of reached for what i had all of my favorite things Lime green is my favorite color. I've got my Frida. They live on my desk because I'm constantly um, stamping her, cutting her out, fussy cutting. Um, some of them are embossed. So Frida is within reach, and I use her in a lot of my ephemera to embellish. So all the little bits and pieces that live on my desk, that's what I was reaching for, and that's what I'm using 
in these pockets. So this one is just a little bit of everything that I love. In fact, that um, jelly print paper on the back is also one of my favorites. So little cut aparts, phrases, um, some of my favorite washi tapes. And I know it looks crazy, you guys. It really does. I mean, look at that cheetah print. <laughs> it's like, there, I'm right here. But I love it. I love everything about it. And that one's actually, I'm actually saving that one to put in my own personal junk journal because I love it so much. And then, and then I made these using the rub on transfers. And I'll show you how I, how I apply the rub on transfers and, and some tips on how to avoid making mistakes with the transfers because this one looks great, but it was a happy accident. I am just so happy that that wasn't a major fail because I meant to just cut out a small section of the rub-on transfers to place over the pocket. But as I peeled it away from the backing, it fell on the envelope. You guys, the word spring everything, it fell perfectly on the envelope. When I tried to peel it away, it was already stuck on the little windows. Like it, it attached itself to the windows of the envelope instantly. And so the only other choice I had was to take my bone folder and just transfer it completely. So lucky that it landed in that perfect spot. So, so just make sure when you handle it, had it fallen just on the paper, I would have easily, I would have been able to easily remove it and it wouldn't have adhered. But because of that cellophane, the cello, cello is, am I saying that right? Because of the little plastic on the windows, it just kind of attached itself to it. But those two last ones with the rub-on transfers, they're, they're my absolute favorite, favorite. I use some of my favorite jelly prints too to line the inside and then to line the outside on some as well. And then these are Tim Holtz butterflies and some Tim Holtz words, but I love that jelly print paper, love it. And those were also just scraps that I had left over. Aside from using scrapbooking paper, old book pages, and jelly print paper, I would also like to use wrapping paper. I do have a few sheets of wrapping paper from just that I've collected. It's already been used, but I'm going to repurpose it because I like the print. I don't do it in this video, but I do plan on using it to line the inside of the envelope. So many ideas, you guys, so many ideas. So the very first thing we are going to do is seal the envelope and you only need a tiny bit of glue. Because it's going to be covered with paper anyway, it's just easier to make sure that it is sealed. Now, I also want to point out that if you don't have these envelopes or this specific envelope, don't worry about it. Use whatever you have. Um, use junk mail envelopes. I have a whole box of junk mail envelopes because I can't seem to stop collecting them. Um, but I also had this box that I, that I want to use. I think I paid $2 for this giant box of envelopes at the thrift store. So just use what you have. So you could see that I'm not measuring anything. I'm just folding over and making a flap and you can eyeball it. You can make it as long or as short as you want. And then you're going to take a sliver of the top to make the opening. Just a sliver. And then we're going to cut the sides because we're going to cut part of that flap off. And I'm going to show you exactly how I do it. So we're just going to cut down to the fold line. And then I'll take my scissors. I'm going to take a sharp pair of small scissors. You don't have to. I could have used the other ones too. Um, but this makes it so much easier. And I'm going to cut in about half an inch on each side. I'm not measuring. 
I'm just kind of eyeballing it and you'd be surprised at how good I've gotten and making sure that they're even on both sides without a ruler. I know. So practice makes better, you guys. So don't stress over it. Because if you do cut too deep, guess what? We have washi tape and we can fix it. It's paper and we can fix it with glue. <laughs> so look at this right here. I'm folding it over to make a second fold. Keep it even on the sides and that way you know that your fold is going to be parallel. It's going to be even. It's not going to go wonky. So just make sure it's even on the sides when you fold it down. If you missed it, go back a few seconds and watch it again. <laughs> or just wait till the end and then watch replay my video again. That would be great. So you could see how I did that. So now I'm going to cut that entire folded flap. We don't need it. Now for cutting all the way across, I am going to use my longer scissors. It just makes it easier. I have about four pairs of scissors on my desk and I keep switching from one to the other. So you'll probably see that. So there you go. We, we don't need that flap. Set it aside. Put it in your scrap box. But do you see how I didn't cut any lower? It's like it was perfect. I got, I, that was really lucky. Had it like I said, had I accidentally cut um, lower or deeper, I, I would just seal it with some washi tape. But the most important thing here is to see that gap from the fold to the pocket. It makes your fingers, it gives your fingers easy access into the pocket, you guys. So this, this envelope is about three and seven eighths of an inch three and seven eighths inches, I should say. And the, the paper I'm going to use to line the inside of the envelope has to be a sliver smaller, like three and six eighths, or three and six and a half eighths, if that's a thing. So what I'm showing you here is I cut it at exactly three and seven eighths, just like the envelope. You're gonna struggle getting it in there because it's the exact same width as the envelope. So all I need you to do is cut a sliver, just a tiny bit less, so that it'll then slide right into the envelope. It'll, it'll be super easy. So this is exactly what I'm going to do is just cut that sliver and I'm even going to show it to you. That's it. And that is going to make all the difference. And now the paper is just going to glide inside the envelope. Look at that. It's already looking amazing, you guys. So some of those some of those jelly prints that I wasn't too fond of because of the way the the, the paints kind of blended together, they they're actually going to look so good in these envelopes. There's a reason why I save every single piece of paper that I work with, you guys. I know. Issues, problems. So now I'm just, here's the easy part. I only need to glue the top half of the paper down. And it's going to stay in place. So we're just going to glue on that top flap. Smooth it over the glue. Now I'm going to flip it around and I'm not going to cut it. I'm going to fold it over because I want the front flap. Once it's closed, I want the front or the top of the front flap to also be covered, collaged, and decorated. So there's your crease. We're going to follow that crease and we're going to fold it over. Use your finger, use, use your bone folder. Do you see that? Oh, I love it. I also love lime green, you guys. I know some of you don't like the color green or the color lime green chartreuse. It is my favorite color. And in neon, it's my ultimate favorite color. So now I'm going to take another piece of paper and I'm going to cover the back of it. 
because my plan is that these pockets be used as a floating pocket in a junk journal. And they can also be used as a floating pocket um, on the front cover of a journal as well. So again, remember my envelope is three and seven eighths. And so I want my paper to be just slightly smaller, so about three and six eighths inches. And we will have a super tiny border all the way around. No big deal. It's going to look great. If you're going to make this and you want it to be exactly to the edge, then you do you, my boo. You make it happen. One of the reasons that, that I create videos is to show you how I do the things that I do. And I'm also doing this in hopes that it inspires you to create things and come up with new ways and new ideas for you to do something. So if you're looking at what I'm doing and you're saying to yourself, oh, you should have done it this way or you should have cut it that way or you should have held it this way, that's actually the inspiration that is being emitted through the screen and it's landing in your brain and it's saying, let's get busy and let's start creating. So you take, you take those ideas that are building right now in your head and you start cutting and gluing you guys I want to make sure that you're also making these projects because they're so fun and yours are going to turn out to be completely different than mine and that's amazing that's what that's what inspiration is all about for you to draw from what you're watching right now and create your own and implement your own ideas so I hope that's what's happening. So just glue and on some of the other envelopes, I was also using my tape runner. The only thing about the tape runner is that once you put the paper down, it's not going to budge. So with a glue stick, you have, you have a little bit of wiggle room so you can make adjustments. With the tape runner, not so much. And then with the um, art glitter glue, because I'm only using tiny amounts of it, it dries super fast. It doesn't give you much time to move things around. So with something like this, I think it's better to use a glue stick. Okay, here's the tricky part. You're going to have to cut that bottom piece off, and you have to be careful that you don't cut the envelope but if you do I haven't yet but if you do cut the bottom guess what we can fix it with some washi tape so no big deal and look at how cute that is looking all of my favorite colors the corals the turquoise the lime greens they look so well together and on the back of it you could, you could actually leave it alone. alone. You don't even have to cover it if you don't want to, but I just like the way it looks. It's going to be a floating pocket, so why not make it look nice? If some of your papers are off a little bit, you have some rough edges, um, trim them off. And then I'm also taking my corner rounder and just finishing off those edges. I like the way that looks. But the back of it, I was going to say, you can use it for journaling. So it's always nice to jot down notes on the back of that pocket. So that'll look great in your journal. What we're going to do now is we're going to ink the edges just a little bit and it completely transforms the look of it. So if you thought it was maybe too bright for your liking, we can tone it down by adding some of this vintage photo and it, it, it kind of subdues that, that uh, the vibrancy of it. And it looks really great too.
as I was doing this, I was thinking that I should probably use some of my other oxide and distress inks. I tend to just use the vintage photo and I've got, I think I have every color, you guys, no joke. So I really need to um, <laughs> rotate my ink pads. I'm sure this would look great if I had inked it in um, coordinating colors, that would have looked amazing. So I may end up doing that because I know that that's the thought that was going through my head. So even I get inspired when I'm working and I know it happens to you too, where you start with, on a project and you're, and if you make multiples like I did, the last one or your final your final piece looks nothing like the first one because as you're working, you're generating new ideas. And your work will evolve. I mean, look at my video from two years ago. My work has evolved. And as much as I love working with, with vintage items, um, old book papers, and, and I just love that, that old world vintage look, I love it. But my work is evolving and I embrace the change. And it's taking a little bit of that, that old style and incorporating it into something new and it's going to keep changing. I feel that every time that I create something, it's a little bit different. There are so many things that I like and I just want to bring them all in like a melting pot, bring them all in together and try to make them cohesive. So you could see what I did here. I took a little strip of washi tape just at that very top edge of the pocket just to have it stand out a little bit. I could have cut the washi tape at the edges, but folding it over works fine with me. Because you're probably thinking, why didn't you just cut it? cut the edge, cut the tape. But folding it over looks nice. It adds a little bit of uh, character to the back. You know, little bits of bits and pieces of washi tape. It's okay. So on this one, we are going to use some of these Dollar Tree transfers. And I'm going to be super careful because I already know if I drop it and it hits those windows on the envelope, that's it. I have to make it work. But so I'm being going to be really careful. I'm holding on to that and I'm going to place it exactly where I want it. In fact, I think I end up placing it exactly as the one I showed you earlier because I really like how that one turned out. My sister was telling me that there are new rub-on transfers that are now available at Dollar Tree. And I haven't been, so I don't know what they are. She just said there's new designs that came out. So maybe I'll swing by um, later on my next day off and, and go see what new inventory they have. But yeah, but I love this. And when I... When I bought these transfers, I honestly didn't know how I was going to use them. I've used transfers on other pro uh, projects in the past. And these, I wasn't sure what to do. And, and as I was going through my supplies, looking for ways to embellish these envelopes, I came across the transfers, the rub-on transfers. And I thought, how perfect to, to be able to, to use these on the envelopes. And it's one of my favorite favorite designs on these pockets. And they transferred, they transferred easily, they, they transferred really well for, you know, they, for costing only a dollar. I didn't have any issues whatsoever with the transfer. The only thing I did, um, struggle with a little bit is that I had to apply more pressure when I was transferring onto the jelly print paper. And I think it's 
because of the acrylic paint. It did transfer. It was just, it just required a little more pressure. But on, on this one, on the window, it was perfect. Transferred with ease over the window. So no problem. I love transfers. I don't even know where else you would buy transfers. I used to use them a long time ago. Like in the late 90s. Lots of transfers. In fact, I still have some. Yes, I do. A couple years ago, I did my Christmas. I did a Christmas daily. December daily. Christmas daily. I did a December daily. And I dug deep, you guys. And I came across with some Christmas rub-on transfers. I'm not kidding. I think they were from 1997. But they look so cute in my Christmas junk journal. So, yeah. But between then and now, I hadn't bought any rub-on transfers. So it was it was 1997 and then it was 2021. Nothing in between. Super cute. That butterfly washi tape is so cute. And I don't remember where I got it, but I love it. My two favorite ones washi tapes that I use are that one, the, um, the butterfly, and then that print one. I'll show you in just a second. So right now I'm just taking that same backing paper from the rub-on transfers and I'm burnishing the rub-on transfers just to make sure that everything is pressed down evenly. And then carefully place it back on that back sheet to protect it and set it aside. But look at how cute that turned out. I love it. I love how that looks. I'm smoothing out the edges just in case there's some transfer just kind of hanging over the edge. But burnishing it there with my finger sealed the deal. I also want to decorate that top flap. And I'm going to take, again, the rub-on transfer and I'm going to place it over that flap. And that bicycle image there is perfect. It's just the perfect size. And just under it, it reads, Welcome Sunshine. Isn't that so cute? Yes, it is. <laughs> so you guys, guess what? You know what I like to do. If you've been with me long enough, you know what I like to do. If you would like to receive one of these pocket envelopes, and a little happy mail package, I would be happy to send it to you. I will select a couple of, if you comment below, I will select um, two or three uh, comments and I will send you out one of these pocket envelopes. So let me know down below if you would be interested in receiving one of these. I'd love to send you a little happy mail with one of these in there. So just to show my appreciation for you being here, for subscribing to my channel, and just being a part of my YouTube journey because it makes me so happy to be here. Yes, it does. <laughs> you guys are going to make me cry. I am. I'm really happy. I love what I do. And, uh, and so I hope to continue to do this for a long time and to bring you content that that you enjoy. But more than anything, I have to enjoy uh, making it as well because if I'm not having fun and if I don't love, like 100% love the projects that I'm making, then there's no point. So, but thank you. I appreciate you very much, you guys. And if you are new to my channel and you are not subscribed, I'd love to have you here. We will have lots of fun. Lots of fun, you guys. So do you see, so there's a little bit of acrylic paint on the front flap. And so that's where I struggled just a little bit, but only a little bit. I just scrubbed, not scrubbed, um, burnished with the bone folder, just a little bit more pressure and it transferred perfectly. So now I'm just going to burnish it over just to make sure that everything seals 100%. And voila we have transferred onto the envelope.
love how that turned out. At this point, I was looking at it and considering putting a button as a closure on that top flap, but um, I don't know where the buttons are. So maybe on other pockets, I will use a button. Also a wax seal. I, I think wax seals would look nice just as an embellishment, not to seal the pocket. One of the little edges on that flap on the left hand side was a little bit rough. And so I'm going to, I'm going to give it some first aid. So just trim off the little excess and then just cover it with washi tape. I discovered that washi tape is my best friend, especially when I was working with these pockets because I was able to mend so many things with the washi tape and I get to use the washi tape. It embellishes, it adds, um, nice little element to the pockets and I'm using my supplies and that's that's what I love the most about this about these excuse me this project is all of the random things that I am using to make these beautiful pockets so now I'm going to choose a paper clip this is my little paper clip container it used to have it used to be a candle and then once it burnt out I'm repurposing it to hold all of my clips. And then I changed my mind. <laughs> I'm going to use a baby clothespin. And that corally orange color is a perfect match. There you go. So I know that those clips might add a little bit of bulk in a journal, but they are removable. but they look so stinking cute. So let me know down below if you like these. Let me know if you've watched that other video as well. You'll find it, I, I do have a playlist for junk mail envelopes or repurposing envelopes. Um, I can't remember what it's called, but it has to do with envelopes. And uh, so you can go there and you can, you can see all of the different videos that I have where I'm playing with junk mail envelopes. Or you can go, you can click on my name and you can go to my homepage on my YouTube channel. And on my homepage, you'll see popular videos and then all of the most popular videos that I have. And the number one is that, um, the junk mail envelope one. So if you've watched it, let me know down below what you think. Let me know if you're enjoying this video. Let me know how you, if you would do things different or any other ideas that you might have um, to add or embellish on these, on these pockets. So this is the sec, I believe I only make the two I mean, I could keep going. I know this video is a little bit longer than most of my videos. Um, but I, it was so much fun showing you the ones that I made. And also I wanted to be able to work on a couple. Um, so you kind of get the idea. So notice on this one, because the print on the scrapbooking paper is going in one direction, if I would have folded it over, the plants would have been upside down. So for this pocket, I did cut the top, but isn't that so cute? That paper is so cute. And so now what I will do is just glue it to the top on right side up. So it's all in the same direction. If it doesn't bother you what direction it goes in, then it doesn't matter and you can just glue it down. In fact, it really doesn't matter, um, but I wanted it to be in the same direction. If it were print, you know, like book page, I would have been okay if it was upside down.
So these are a lot of fun. I wish I could have made, I mean, kept working, but then we would have been here for hours, literally hours. Um, I have a little assembly line going on my desk. And so in between work, because, you know, I do have another job. <laughs> um, so in between work and on my breaks, I go back to my little assembly line and I start working on my envelopes. Um, it'll be a few days before I finish all the ones that I'm working on, but oh my gosh, they're looking so cute. So if, if I send you uh, one of these envelopes, it may not be one of the ones that you see in this video just because I'm making so many others off camera as well. I'm going to take some of this beautiful scrapbooking paper and I'm going to line or cover the back of the pocket. One thing you should know is the thinner the paper, the better. So if you have collage papers, and you know you, know you don't have to use solid strips of paper, you could collage the back. You can, you can do napkin. So as long as you have thin paper, it's easier to work with. You don't wanna make your envelope too thick especially because there are, you know, the flap is folding over and so you want to make sure that it is uh, foldable and that you're not forcing the crease. So I recommend thinner or lightweight papers. And using napkins would also be perfect for the back, even for the front. That would, that would be really nice. I may just make some with napkins. You guys, I had one of my granddaughters graduate from high school last week. Can you believe that? I have twin granddaughters that are going to be 18 years old this month. Can you believe that? 18. Oh, they're so cute. I'm so proud. So yeah, so we had high school graduations last week and it has been super, super busy week. So much fun. I ate, I kid you not, I ate so much. I gained six pounds in one week. Who does that? Me, I do that. I ate all the cakes, the cookies, the pizzas, the burgers, name it, I ate it. So now I'm, I'm just on a smoothie diet this week because I feel so bloated. I know TMI, but I'm feeling a lot better now. So the washi tape, because I don't think it's because it's old, but this one didn't have a lot of sticky. So I'm just adding a little bit of glue stick just to make sure it sticks on the back side. And look at how cute this one looks folded over. Super cute. But yeah, so I'm on a um, smoothie diet. I mean, I'm eating other foods as well, but um, the smoothie is really helping so that I don't feel so uh, like I'm going to explode. I'm feeling much better. My pants are fit, fitting a lot more comfortable. That right there is my favorite washi tape. I don't remember where I got it. So if you're familiar with this washi tape, it is like a newsprint. If you're familiar with it and you know where it came from, um, let me know down below. I may just Google where um, Google uh, newsprint washi tape and find it that way because that one I do use a lot and I don't want to run out of that one. But I want to keep using it. I'm not hoarding it because then it's just going to gum up. And what I'm trying to do is use a little bit of washi tape in all of my projects, you guys, all of them. Because it really was sad to see how many washi tape rolls I had to throw away because there was nothing I could do to salvage it and it was really frustrating when you're trying to peel it and it's breaking off in little pieces where it's not coming off or as believe it or not as thin as washi tape is when it gums up 
you kind of peel a top layer off. You split it in two. I didn't think that was possible with washi tape, but you know what I mean because it sticks to itself. And I just didn't have time for that. So I just threw, threw them away. There was nothing I could do to salvage. Look at the beautiful, beautiful pockets, you guys. All different styles. They all have a different personality. And I love each and every one of them. These stickers are so cute. I believe they came from Hobby Lobby. I've had these for a little bit. And we also have to use stickers like this because if you don't, after a while, they're not going to come off that plastic. I mean, you can always cut around the plastic and use it that way, but it's better if you use it while it's still sticky. On that top fold, I'm actually going to take a bit of washi tape and place it right over the fold. And that's, it was kind of, the, the edge there was a little bit rough because the two different papers, the scrapbooking papers kind of met there. So I'm just going to soften it, soften that fold by adding the washi tape. And again, you could cut the edges off, but it's just easier and I like the look of just folding it over. I wanted to add a lot more stickers, but it was really, it was busy as it was, and so I left it at that. So do you guys have any plans for this summer? For summer vacation? Any trips? I am thinking that I want to take a trip in August and I want to go to, I want to go visit my best friend in California. So I might do that. Just give myself a little trip for my 53rd birthday in August. Woohoo! So fingers crossed and hope that all goes well and we're able to hang out because I haven't seen my best friend since when. Oh my gosh, because of the pandemic, you guys, I haven't seen her since since I was 50 years old in 2019. Can you believe that's my best friend? So, I'm really excited and and I hope I hope it happens. So, that's it. That's about the only plans that I have for this summer. So let me know if you are doing anything fun this year. I'm going to take a couple of the Tim Holtz words and I'm just going to place it on top. It did look a little bit plain when I was done. But I added the couple of words. I'll let it sit like that overnight. And if I feel like adding another element to it, I will. But for now, that's okay. And I do feel like that little clothespin needs a little embellishment. So I may do something with, with, that, with that one. But you guys... Look at them. They are so cute. Let me know what you think down below, please. I'd love I'd love your feedback. And if you have any questions, if you saw something and I didn't mention it or mention anything about it, please let me know down below. I try to respond to all of your questions and your comments as soon as I possibly can. So just let me know down below if I missed any missed mention mentioning anything. And again, don't forget to go watch that video, it, the other video from a couple years ago. It, it's from 2020. And this, this one right here is on the cover of that video in the thumbnail. So go search for that. It'll be linked down below. I may add it at the end. Um, or if you would rather me send you the link, just let me know down below in the comments. You guys, thank you so much for being here with me. I appreciate you so much. 
And remember, get to work, get busy. And I sure hope that this inspired you guys to create. Thank you so much. You guys take care and I will see you later. Bye.